Hi there. And last month was a huge time for uh, for sales. We had the Aero sale. There was the Kino sale. There was the Barnes and Noble Criterion sale. And 88 Films also had a sale. So uh, there's a lot of companies having sales at the same time. Now I could not avail myself of all those sales, or I wouldn't be here right now because my better half would have me buried somewhere in the backyard and we got a large backyard so she's able to do that now so i had to be very careful so <laughs> i did get some great stuff from both the arrow and the kino sale i also got something from indicator as well it's my first indicator purchase and uh from what i got i'll definitely purchase from indicator again uh let's start off the indicator one and we'll go through that one of them will go through the uh the kinos and the arrows i got some uh, pretty cool box sets uh some really neat stuff and i'll let you know the stuff i've seen uh give you kind of a thumbs up and since it's coming at closing in on halloween time I know it's only like late august or coming in early september but i'm already like in in a full Halloween gear so uh, just like the video I mentioned yesterday when I see something here that I think is a good is a good buy is a good purchase for Halloween I'll let you know um, but let's start off with the indicator so in indicator is a uh, is a company in UK uh, otherwise known as powerhouse films now if you uh, if you're familiar with them then you know you're probably from the UK or you're buying a lot of this stuff now this one here is a uh, is a box set and it's one of my better half's uh, favorites. Actually, she's a huge Ray Harryhausen fan. Uh, same, same as I actually. Uh, actually, she's an even bigger Ray Harryhausen fan than I am. And uh, it was one of the things that kind of like got us to uh, together in the first place. Is love these like cheesy movies and these like kind of like, stop motion animation. I love that stuff. Anyway, the set is amazing. So what I, we picked up was the uh, the Sinbad trilogy, and it has all three movies on Blu-ray. Now we had a, um, a Sinbad DVD set. Uh, but uh, we wanted to upgrade to uh, to have them all on Blu-ray, especially to have Eye of the Tiger. Uh, my father does have the uh, the Twilight Time edition of Eye of the Tiger, and there's it's been bandied about on and offline uh, before in, in different rooms and that uh, whether which version was better. A lot of people thought that found that the, the kind of the newer print that was done for the Twilight Time edition was better. I found it a mite too dark myself. That's my own personal preference. Uh, I do prefer the indicator edition of the eye of the tiger uh you know for me uh eat you know to each his own but uh that's how i feel now it's an amazing looking set i'll take this banner off for a se in a second there but i just want to show this to you so we are we have number 2074 of 6000 i do recommend if you're really into harry house and to definitely pick up this set it's a gorgeous looking set so you can see the the front there each one of these by the way have like a have reversible covers now I'm just gonna put that I'm not gonna read out all that stuff but I'll just put that right there so if you want to stop it and look and actually like read what special features are you can like pause the video now and actually just see the, uh, the different special features or hopefully that's coming up nice and clear for you so you see the uh, the logos for the three films there and uh, of course there's the they've luckily put that uh, the rating thing down on bottom so you know they still got it in there but you don't have the big rating thing like uh, marring the artwork and I like that a lot actually Actually, even inside, uh, when you uh, when you go to open it up, there's not the usual indicator art like thing on top. It actually just it has like uh, it just shows you the art, and it's fantastic. Now, first off is the uh, is the original film, uh, the seventh voyage of Sam. And I love the way the art actually takes up all the cover. There's nothing like there's you know there's no logos, there's no uh, there's no banners. Nothing's actually uh, uh, taking away from the artwork itself. And a lot of companies. Uh, especially like uh, if you get like a uh, actually almost, uh, almost all the companies like somewhere even Arrow and that will put their the logo somewhere up around there and indicator does for for their single releases but for these here box sets I like the fact that you actually get the art just like that and you bring it over like that now this is a new 4k restoration of uh, of the movie the seventh voyage of Sinbad and some people that were not quite sure on the eye of the tiger that bought the set they bought it for this movie right here and um, I gotta say I do recommend it it is a blu-ray DVD combo pack so if you don't yet have a, uh, a region free blu-ray player and you got a TV and uh, and a working computer with a DVD drive well DVD drives on computers those usually are uh, are pretty much region free so you can actually probably put it into your DVD so I'll take this out here so you guys can see so I'll show you the discard I love the discard here and uh, the reason I'm taking both of these out is so you can see the other cover on the other side because they did put a lot of work into this so I'm not gonna flip it over but I will show you what the cover looks like so again it's there's both covers are gorgeous so I never really know which cover to keep on there but for now I'm just gonna keep this original cover I do like it I do like the way that it's done 
Uh, now this is a uh, Curran Matthews playing uh, Sinbad in the first movie. Of course, there was a different actor that played him in uh, in all three. Now, in the next one, we've got who played Sinbad in the Golden Voyage of Sinbad. Just watch me, Curran Matthews, again, make me a liar. No, <laughs> Dan Feldblau played Sinbad. And what I really like with this one, this is actually probably my favorite out of the three, uh, and because Tom Baker is in it, and Tom Baker plays a a really good bad guy. Now, again, I love the artwork on this. It's just fantastic movie style artwork. And uh, then uh, there again are the uh, are the features for anybody that wants to look at it. As you can see, they put the rating on the back there so it wouldn't affect the uh, the artwork. And again, I love it. Uh, now, for this one here, the well, the artwork for the reverse blur for this one, I don't need to take it out to show you because it's actually the box set. So if you remember the, this one, this is the seventh. Oh, sorry, the Golden Voyage artwork right here. That's uh, that's what the box cover is. So that's the uh, the artwork for that. So you can you can see it on the Blu-ray to itself. Now, last but definitely not least, is the, is the controversial one and the one that I really love. And I love this art, by the way. It's a Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger, a, a great one. I think Patrick Wayne, yeah, Patrick Wayne, Wayne played Sinbad in this one, and uh, kind of. Interacts is Patrick Troughton, who was the second Doctor, uh, is in this one here. Now, pa now J Tom P Baker, the fourth Doctor, is in the last one. So, uh, following the Doctor Who roots, they've uh, they've kept it like that. Again, it's like unaltered artwork, just nothing to uh, to mess it up. Now, I will take these out and show you the alternate art since it is different, and I do really really enjoy these films. Uh, very 70s ish hold that tiger but uh i gotta say i do love uh the original artwork so that's what's gonna be uh definitely what goes on for uh, for me for this one here because it's it's just so that is so sexy now aside from having the uh like three great blu-ray editions of these films and having fantastic artwork are really solid solid box set not a flimsy one at all uh the it also came with a book as well now this the this is the ray area is a book by indicator with the sinbad trilogy it actually talks about the fourth film as well that was not made uh sinbad goes to mars uh, which i would love to have seen actually and this runs about let's see about 78 around 80 pages long now does it qualify as a booklet or a book well 80 pages is is book length so basically anything they say anything over 40 to 60 pages uh that anything 40 to 45 pages usually like considered booklet anything over that usually goes upon like uh would be considered a book uh in my opinion anyway and if you've ever if you're grown up like me with scholastics book club then you know exactly what i mean uh now this is a really gr cool book there's a lot of different like uh interviews and articles and pictures in here as well it's not like full of just pictures though so you are getting some good interviews and that in there i'm just going to open up the uh the content section to let you know kind of what you can see i gotta show you this first it's actually kind of cool but uh so we've got the it breaks them down into the different films we've got the uh cast and crew we got a michael brook essay and the and an oral history and that's how they follow it from for the seven voyage golden voyage and sinbad and the other tiger and it also goes sinbad Goes to Mars, the unmade film, and then they talk about the animation process, history of animation, and you know, just give disc, disc credits and stuff like that. So, again, an incredible book with an incredible set. And if you haven't picked it up and you're a Sinbad fan, you're a Ray Harryism fan, I really do recommend it. It's fun, it's cheesy, and it's something you can put put on like any time and just uh, and just watch it. I love the Sinbad films. I love Ray Harryhausen stuff in uh, in general. The uh, when I was a kid for my uh, my birthday, the first time we had like a we rented actually a uh, CED machine, and my mom wanted to get me uh, some movies for my uh, for my birthday. So she got me Kramer versus Kramer, um, which you know fantastic. Uh, but uh, she actually got me the. Uh, Oh God! What's the name of it? Clash of the Titans, and I was so like blown away. It was such a cool movie, and I and I got to watch it like in the CD machine, um, compassive disc. That's what that is. Um, but uh, it was incredible, and I was 
it was one of those because I'd, I'd seen it like in, in theater it was fantastic so next up are my uh, are my kinos I got a few of these now I don't have all the kinos coming yet there's another order coming from kino now there was a mistake with the order and I had to contact them uh, because they sent me I had two orders I, the first order I didn't get so I got the second order come and I figured a couple of the di discs were uh, probably you know weren't ready yet in the first order but when I got open up my second order there were two that were uh, that were missing from that order so they said you know we'll they're on back or we'll send them out so they sent me the that uh, those two and I received those but they put the tracking number for those second two discs on the first order making it seem like I had received the first order and I hadn't received any of it yet so I had to contact them I called them and then I followed it up with a uh, with an email with the order number and exactly what was missing and what I had received so they uh, they're supposed to hopefully get back to me soon and because uh, I love Kino I love them as a company and usually they get stuff it really well but you know these things do happen and I'll keep you guys up to date on uh, when and I oh, you'll see them when I get my uh, want to get my stuff so I got a few here right now now the one thing they were good about is that when I when they didn't have all of my order they upgraded some of the that I just had on put on on DVD format to uh, to blu-ray all except for one actually and uh, I'm guessing this did this one even have a blu-ray maybe it did I'm not sure so first up is the only DVD out of my uh, Kino Award that I picked up and that is who with uh, Elliot Gould and Trevor Howard uh, this is otherwise known as Robo man if you've seen it you and if you've gone looking for this on like on, on YouTube for a trailer or something like that, uh, look under the title Roboman because you're not going to find it under the title Who. Uh, it took me a long time to search this one out. This is one that my better half really wanted to see. It does have like a commentary with director Jack Gold, moderated by film historian Anthony Sloan, and a, a trailer gallery here as well. So if you look at there, you can see the Roboman on, on it. But it looked kind of interesting. It was something that we kind of got a kick out of. Just the we saw the opening of it. And right from there, like, like him was like, I need this one. So I better have this was her executive decision to get who. And uh, she actually has a few coming. That, uh, so uh, she'll be excited when those come. Now here's one that we did watch. And uh, it's a Blu-ray. A gorgeous cover, by the way, for this film. And uh, a lot of great features. Kino's actually getting up there with features. So it is Astro Zombies. It's a Ted V. Michaels film. Uh, we had a blast with this movie. My better half, like, love this one there was a scene at the beginning where there's these two wind-up robots and I think there's like a was there tanks too there's tanks <laughs> there's little toy tanks and <laughs> it was like that can't be no they can't be those can't be real they can't make those got to be like toys you know they got to be like they can't be like actually saying <laughs> that they're real robots I'm like no this is an epic battle for Ted V Michaels this is the way he does stuff and it brought me if you've ever seen the movie Big Meat Eater uh, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about if you've seen National Zombies um, and when we're watching this I actually mentioned to him that there's a film out there called The Incredibly Strange Creatures that uh, that uh, it's kind of a mix-up creature that that became mix-up zombies or stopped living and became mix-up zombies so I think she wants to see that one now as well uh, a bit of pain in that but we love our our bad films and we had a blast with this movie uh, a great cast so Wendell Corey who uh, sadly is pretty much sloshed out of his gorg through the, he's drunk through, through the entire entirety of this film and we he didn't realize right away but I was you know I I know the history of behind you know this film and, and behind Wendell Corey and I knew that this was the last film he made and he died and he died of like a uh, with his liver so uh, he was actually a very bad alcoholic and if you know that when you're going through you can actually tell he's, now he's actually doing the scenes pretty well for a guy that's pretty drunk uh, but it is really fun I mean uh, we have like Sura Tura Santana from the uh, Russ Meyer films on in here as well John Carradine's here it's a great cast actually uh, William ba Baghdad no idea this right now but I know he's in it uh, <laughs> so it's a really fun movie now there is a riff tracks on here there's like a couple commentaries there's another commentary with the writer director producer Ted V Michaels because he does it all of course the riff tracks with their normal guys uh, with uh, Mike Nelson uh, Kevin Murphy and P Bill Corbett again uh, I haven't watched any of the commentaries yet and there's not a commentary with hor horror cinema story and Chris Alexander and the original theatrical trailer so but we watched it just as it is without any commentaries or any riffing it was just such a fun fun film I really do recommend it it's one of those cheesy fun ones that if you get it and watch it around like uh, Halloween time it's actually fun for that uh, 
it's not like a super gory film or anything like that it's just cheesy fun and that creature uh, that he does look like that but he doesn't look that good it's like a huge mask put on there there's like one scene where there's this um, thing I think in his belt or his stomach that's supposed to be like I guess a solar thing because there are these astro zombies are like I guess they should have called them solar zombies because they they get their uh, their energy from the Sun even when it's dark outside I'm not sure how that works <laughs> but uh, but basically the he gets in a fight with the with one they with the hero the hero knocks it off of him so immediately he <laughs> The zombie freaks out. He grabs the hero's flashlight and he puts it to his head like that and starts running with the flashlight attached to it, like on his head. It's hilarious. It is fantastic. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, definitely pick up Astro Zombies from Kino. It's a fantastic release, by the way. The uh, great quality transfer too. Uh, I never expected to see a movie like that look this good. Uh, now, speaking of that, here's another one that we did watch. And that's Beware the Blob. This is hilarious. It has an amazing cast, by the way. Larry Hagman is the director of this, but where the Blob, otherwise known as Son of the Blob, was uh, made because basically um, one of Larry Hagman's friends had the rights to the Blob. Larry Hagman said, I'll direct it, but uh, you know, I'll be in it as long as I can direct it. And I'll get my friends to be in it. So they had a script. Shagged the script because <laughs> what they did was decided, screw it, we're just going to say whatever we want to say and they do that I mean you can tell right away that nobody's going off of any script here they're just saying lines that come out of their head seriously watch this movie and watch this movie knowing it's almost completely imp improvised it is hilarious but look the cast I mean we got Robert Walker jr. who is the legit lead of this uh, Godfrey Cambridge Burgess Meredith Garrett Graham's in here Larry Hagman uh, Sid Hay Carol Lindley Dick Van Patten uh, so many more there's just so many people in this movie Dick Van Patten has an hilarious like extended cameo as a scoutmaster and uh, from beginning to end this was a blast now you have to know going in you know it's a very low budget film uh, it, but it knows exactly what it is it's it's very comedic the producer of the film the guy that like uh, got Larry Hagman to do it was actually worried because uh, he didn't want it to be so comedic Larry Hagman for the comedy side of it uh, and you can tell the cast is having the blast doing the film uh, but no going in that you know you're not watching people like reading an actual script they're pretty much like uh, doing exactly what I'm doing right now saying whatever the hell comes off the top of their head uh, except unfortunately with less skill than you usually do in a YouTube video just just putting it out there and they're and the, you know they're trained for this <laughs> but it's fun uh, there is another commentary that I really uh, gotta watch with film Stern Richard Harlan Smith there's an alternate title sequence which I'm guessing I haven't watched that but it's probably gonna have Son of the Blob there and there's a trailer gallery as well so you get to see some other Kino ones in the same uh, genre that you're probably gonna like next up another one that we actually did watch and that is Yungari monster from the deep this one is a Korean monster film and we had a blast again with this one it is such a fun film uh, there are actually some great effects for this one the monster suit is uh, the there's some issues the he f shoots fire like through his uh, through his mouth and there's this like tube and you can see it like this tube like shooting fire out but because of the way that it's done they had to like slit the mouth back a little bit too much so you're gonna see like some flopping of the mouth especially if he goes down like this there's a sequence in Gary where he actually uh, busts as a move and Gary and a little annoying uh, Korean boy dance together I kid you not this really happens in this film uh, the boy is not as annoying as some of as you'd see in some of the gamma pictures and stuff like that he is still fairly annoying but he doesn't take away from the picture that much I really didn't enjoy this one it was a fun film it ran like what's it like 80 minutes and it really really ran at a, a fast click and man it was over before you knew it uh, but there were some really good scenes in this there's this is in color even though when you look on the on the back of this it shows these scenes in black and white it's a color film and uh, <laughs> when the monster gets you know spoiler alert the monster dies uh, there's like they feel sorry for a minute and it's just hilarious in there in the in the offhanded way that they you know they kind of get in that oh I'm sorry that the monster died type of thing because <laughs> he's dancing with the kid he's and he's kind of like the trailer park monster because <laughs> like uh, instead of going for like the nuclear stuff he goes for gas it's like he drinks 
some gas. He drinks a bunch, of, like a canister of gas, and looks like he's drunk because he's like he's swerving all over the place. Uh, it's a fantastic film. It's really fun. Uh, I did the I didn't mind the monster suit. You know, it is pretty cheesy. It is what it is. Uh, again, we got like a uh, out of commentary by film historian Steve Ru- Steve Rifle and writer critics Kim Sung Ho. There's trailers for the Phantom from Ten Thousand Leagues and the Monster That Challenged the World, which is not quite true. There, there is a trailer for uh, I th- is it Phantom Ten Thousand Leagues? I think that not just a trailer, but it's a Joe Dante's trailers from Hell, uh, which is always a, uh, an added like bonus on these here. I love this here, so check out Yungari. So any of those three are great, kind of fun, cheesy Z-grade monster. F- Picked, blah, blah, picks that you can have for uh, for Halloween time. So I got a bunch more to show you. So let's get to it. So yeah, there's more Kino on the way. So next up is At the Earth's Core. Again, love this one here. Now I gotta check something before we go any further, because I was sure. I know that some of these have alternate artwork, and I don't want to. Uh, yeah, okay. Go past that. So nowadays Kino are starting to upgrade their game when it comes to a lot of this stuff. So when Astro Zombies came out, it actually came with a cool and totally fitting, uh, totally psychedelic uh, artwork. So if this was the early 80s and you were tripping, <laughs> this is a either a very fantastic or very scary thing to look at. Uh, so there you go. Astro Zombies. Love the alternate on that. That's actually really cool. I love that Kino are starting to really do that. Next up is At the Earth's Core. Again, another fantastic film. Uh, if you guys watched my uh, my video yesterday, then you got to see the fact that uh, they put out that I got the MGM release of the four ones, like The Land of Time Forgot, The People of the Time Forgot. This is the third one, uh, At the Earth's Core. Now, the, ma- the, the Land of Time Forgot is the best of the three that are put out, but I really wanted this one here. It's got Carol Monroe, it's got Peter Cushing in this one as well. And of course, uh, you know, it's got Doug McClure. They've all got Doug McClure. Uh, so there are features on this one here. Uh, it is a fun, cheesy one. Now, it won't be as cheesy as the as the ones that I've just shown you right there. It'll have a little bit more seriousness. We got Peter Cushing there. Uh, so as you can see, special features. It's actually done done differently. You don't see like the normal Kino Lobo Studio Classics logo on here. We got an on-camera interview with star Kevin Monroe, on-camera interview with director Kevin O'Connor. So Kevin O'Connor, I put on his name. Kevin Connor, idol commentary with the director. There's original trailer and more. So and more, I'm guessing there may be probably some extra trailers on there. Uh, now there is an alternate artwork in here as well, so I will show you that. And it is actually pretty cool. So, just amazing, amazing stuff that they've done with these here. I'm really excited. I was really excited about the Kino Lower Brazil, and I'll be honest with you, if I had more money at the time, I probably would have made a third order. And, because uh, everything we've gotten from Kino, I, I have to be honest, we sit down, we watch it, and I don't think we've had a time when we were bored, or when we were like, uh, we really enjoy it. We have Kino nights. We've had Kino weekends, actually. And, uh, just some great, great stuff. Actually, slide her eyes at me when I say the third order thing. I wasn't really going to get a third order, darling. <laughs> Don't hurt me. Uh, <laughs> next up is one I've been wanting for a while. I want to get a few horror. Uh, this is not really horror. It's kind of a horror comedy. Uh, amps, high emphasis on the comedy part, but it is a very fun film. Um, and uh, that is Highway to Hell. I've been looking forward to this one. I haven't seen this one since I was, uh, since I was a teen, actually. Uh, C.J. Graham, actually, from... From part six, he played Jason. Part six of uh, Friday the Thirteenth. He's uh, that same right there. He plays the uh, the cop guy. So uh, is his name there actually Sergeant Bedlam. Yeah, there you go. So we got Nato commentary with Dexter Eight to Young. Is that his name? Is that really? His? I gotta check out. That can't really his name. I uh, interview with SFX director. Uh, no, sir. If it make brighter, Steve Johnson animated montage of images and original theatrical trailer. It is a great little film. We got what a cast! So it's got like Patrick Burgeon is in this. Chad Lowe stars in this one here. Oh, uh, you know some of you younger people are going to know from the uh, from the series. Pretty Little Liars, where he plays the he plays the dad. Uh, Christy Swanson in here. Richard Farnsworth. Uh, who they don't have listed here? We've got Gilbert Godfrey playing Hitler. We got Ben Stiller. I think he's Attila the Hun. I can't quite remember, but I'm pretty sure that he is. Ben Stiller is. Uh, sisters in this as well as is his mother and father uh, it is very much a, a comedic film and uh, I'll let you see the other cover because this is another one that has like a kind of
cover is it? It's a matte cover on the inside. So I'm definitely keeping the uh, Sergeant Bedlam cover on the outside. Great little film. We haven't checked it out. This is a really good one for uh, for Halloween, actually. A lot, actually, a lot of these are. So next up is just a, kind of a cheesy actioner that I wanted. Uh, it's one I've wanted for a while, and it's called Certain Fury. It stars Irene Cara and Tatum O'Neill. It's you know in the kind of the exploitation genre, but it's not as exploitation as like say a lot of them will be. There, so you're not going to get like the cheesiness of like say a Steel Justice, for instance. Uh, which, by the way, if you've got Steel Justice. Uh, you know, thumbs up, you're awesome, and that is an amazing opening to a film, Rat, with like the, okay, yes, <laughs> you know, so basically, there is, again, another auto commentary with Nathaniel Thomas and Tim Greer in a trailer gallery here as well, um, I really like Irene Kerr, of course, she did Fame, uh, oh man, she did so much, Fame, City Heat, yeah, and uh, of course, Flashdance, song Flashdance, uh, Tatum O'Neill, and they play like, basically, they're the whole idea is that they're like they're getting like uh, convicted in a, in a courtroom and two other people of that one's black one's white uh, come in and they shoot up a bunch of cops in that so they escape like in the in, in the chaos but they are mistaken for those two other people so there's people like searching for them and actually search for them hardcore because they think these two girls are cop killers but they're not and you actually got you got to watch it to actually kind of see where it goes from there but actually you know it's a pretty good one directed by Stephen Gyllenhaal uh, it's one I wanted to add to my collection now speaking of ones that I want to add to my collection I love the action movies uh, we watched a lot of the action films and we love Michael Dudikoff uh, Avenging Force top for me uh, now if you've seen that you got to check this out this is called River of Death great cast Michael Dudikoff Robert Vaughn's this is a Nazi uh, Donald Pleasance is in this one here Herbert Lom you can see the names up here um, L.Q. Jones is in this one. So basically, it, this is kind of a period picture. It starts off in the at the end of the uh, Second World War. Uh, we see that like Robert Vaughn is evil Nazi. Goes like twenty years later to the the nineteen sixties. Uh, Michael Dudikoff plays this kind of like badass, almost like a, maybe an Indiana Jones style character. And he goes into the to the jungle. Uh, kind of gets screwed over. He loses some people, and he decides you know he's going to go back in he's going to get them out he's going to he takes the motley crew along with him and there you go it's again i love these type of films we got an auto commentary by director steve carver and star mokadudikov on this one an original theatrical trailer as well so uh you see robert vaughn with his nazi outfit on which nowadays is way too uh too close to reality so next up is burt reynolds in malone um this one I kind of remember uh, not well and so that's one of the reasons I wanted to see it. I love Burt Reynolds especially in his actioner roles I do like you know Burt Reynolds kind of Burt Reynolds smoking the bandit style thing but I prefer this I prefer this I prefer White Lightning I prefer Gator uh, movies like that and Malone is one where basically he's like kind of a, a badass uh, ex-CIA guy he goes to this like this small town uh, Cliff Robertson plays this kind of like uh, really like a right wing uh type of guy kind of a white supremacist style um character uh no features on this one unfortunately lauren hutton's in this one we got cynthia gibb here as well cliff robertson did you see the cat gun in there uh and uh again really cool film now Next up, we got Black Exploitation with Trouble Man. We watched a trailer. This one looked really cool. The character's name is Mr. T. It's not Mr. T, the actor, but the that's the character. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a uh, Black Exploitation one. It's more of a hard edge kind of like more serious drama Black Exploitation one. But it does get into the real action stuff as well. So the action is there. It just it gets a little bit of a slow burn. But when it gets going, it gets it gets going really well. Um, so it's not quite Truck Turner stuff, but it is kind of cool. And I, I really do like this. So we got another commentary again, well, with Nathaniel Thompson again, and uh, Howard Spurger, and a trailer gallery as well. I'm guessing you'll see some more of their, uh, their Black Exploitation. They've got movies like Truck Turner and stuff like that uh, coming out as well. And, you know, these don't have, like, uh, any type of, like, reversible covers on them. So next up, we have the only 3D one that we picked up, but it's a cool one. It is Ape. It is super cheesy. Uh, I haven't watched it in 3D yet. I hear the 3D is actually good in it. It's like kind of coming at you 3D, which I like. I'm not a fan of the newer 3D where it almost looks like picture book, where you know that's 
it's more depth in the background. Uh, I don't like that. I like the more gimmicky 3D where stuff's coming out at your face. Uh, that's always been more of the style 3D I like is what I grew up with. And uh, although it it is fancier to see the new like more immersive painting like 3D, it bores the hell out of me actually. Uh, but I do like this type of stuff. Ape is just a cheesy fun little film. Just look at that. Who, who doesn't want to see that? You see him with a a gigantic snake there and he's like choking a shark there's a ship uh, there's like a helicopter and it's a guy hanging from it who wouldn't want to see that 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 looks amazing of course it's not gonna look like that here's the ape from the from the film it's a guy not gosh he actually flips you the bird uh, during the film uh, there's an auto commentary with uh, cult film authority authority Chris Alexander on here as well with as uh, historian Hillary Hess we got a tactical trailer and a trailer gallery I wonder if we're gonna get, get any more of those trailers in hell from hell I really like those um, the, Joanna Kearns actually from Growing Pains you can see her right there she's actually the uh, the, la the lead in this one so basically she's the Fay Ray Jessica Lang type character for uh, this film uh, really looking forward to this it does have the you know the 3d logo on it uh, sadly 3d you don't see that around much anymore uh, people go a lot more for like uh, kind of just the regular 4k stuff as opposed to what what they do now in, uh, in 3d um, which is really a shame now I'm gonna speed it up a bit because my voice is going <clears throat> but I uh, did get some great stuff to show you guys from Arrow so first one is the only DVD I picked up and that is Massimo Delamano's uh, super bitch I'm, it's you know it's in other words the aka blue was it blue movie blackmail right yeah blue movie black blue movie blackmail is actually a much better title for this uh it's a really g cool film it's got a uh, stephanie beecham here and she's naked a lot and i'm not going to complain about that i really love stephanie beecham um but it's you know it's uh pliziati Plizi Plizi i can't pronounce that but uh it's the an italian like on a gangster police type of thriller uh widescreen transfer we got a uh, bullets babes and blood the high octane uh, action of the Italian police film Ruggiero Reg Diodato remembers Ivan Razmov. Ivan Razmov's in this I really like Ivan Razmov. Uh, this, again there's the booklet and of course there's one of those little uh, things so basically when this movie came out they were they were like promoting Mark the Devil so there you see a, a nice little picture of Stephanie Beach in there her hair that is a really odd looking picture of Stephanie Beach in. looks like she's got no neck or like she's some sort of alien type thing just look at that is that really strange uh, so there you go super bitch great film really glad to have it uh, next up is the bloodstained butterfly a very cool and very different uh giallo actually uh this one here does goes a lot into like a uh, into courtroom drama there's a uh, a lot of like they show like the, the the techniques with the uh with kind of like the csi the police type of stuff and uh i found this really good great little twist ending on there i did really enjoy this film uh, doesn't go for a lot of the tropes of a lot of like the super nudity or the super extra violent stuff it is very much a kind of a slower burn uh, giallo was done in 1971 when there were a ton of giallos made just go uh, google 1971 giallo you're going to see a bunch of stuff there from everybody from martino to oh god uh argento almost everybody that did giallos made one in 1971 the blood same butterfly is one of those it's a fantastic one there is a great visual essay on here called murder and in big flat minor with a uh, trial worth there's a ton of features which I'm not gonna read out to you but I will put it right there so you guys can see so anytime you want to stop and like just freeze them up feel free to do so next up I grabbed another Jules Dessen movie I love these films I love these kind of like uh, film noir stuff and this is Thieves Highway a great little film Richard Conti and Lee J Cobb now this has a great like uh, documentary on here uh, the long haul of AI Biz Redis, I hope I got the name right, 55 minute documentary on the author and screenwriter of Thieves Highway, along with some other really cool features. Definitely want to check it out if you're a fan of film noir. If you like, uh, if you like Jules Dassin, then you're going to like this one right here. Next up is A Mare of Babylon. It's a short film, actually. And uh, it's not usually known as one of his more classic films, but I really wanted to get this one. It is five dollars for an August Moon. I love the cover of this film here. Edward Finch is in this one. I'm a huge Edward Finch fan. Unfortunately, if you're a huge fan of Edward Finch and you're used to seeing Edward Finch in the way that you normally see Edward Finch in a film, you're not going to see that here. She's not going to be in like. Uh, there's no. I don't, I'm pretty sure there's no Edward Finch nude scene, you know, obligatory nude scene that's usually in her films. And this film here, it's a. Uh, much more of a kind of a straightforward one very short but 70 minutes long uh, maybe you know, close to 80 there's a got a documentary Mary Bab and Master of the Macabre on here great stuff now I'm gonna go through these pr 
pretty fast but I will be doing uh, singular videos on some of the sets here that I have picked up down the road now I did pick up the Outlaw Gangster VIP the complete collection really really love this one here uh, it's got like six uh, discs here I think three blu-rays and three DVDs uh, two movies on each there are six films on, all together uh, really cool looking stuff and I'm a huge huge fan of these uh, films Stray Cat Rocks another great set by the way if you don't have either one of these I do recommend them I would like to get Prisoner Scorpion down the road but for right now I really want to have this one here next up I got Bloodbath and we watched the document the documentary on this was worth it alone the documentary was insanely great it was done by Tim Lucas just a fantastic documentary great stuff there is a uh, I'll, I'll, like I'll go through these on their own and uh, on another time there's like a poster in here uh, just some great stuff and uh, bloodbath I love the artwork love the way that's done now uh, see this there no there's like let me just show you really quickly the uh, alternate art for bloodbath because it is that cool it's got a worn publication type of feel to it if you know what I mean if you look used to the eerie or uh, or creepy worn uh, books of the 1970s that are and I think early 80s then you probably know what I'm talking about next up is and I got it over there so I'm not gonna bring it over but it's uh brain damage and I did get the enamel Elmer that went with it as well uh, again this is the limited edition with the with the Elmer and I'm not sure what else was limited on it but there's a a ton of features as you can see huge fan of brain damage I love Henliner, Henliner's work anyway I've always been a fan of Henliner I really gotta get that sexploitation with that him and David Friedman did down the road two more to show you guys two big sets actually so first up is one that I've wanted for ages it's a Kozlowski one it did come out from uh, from Criterion as well but this in my opinion is the much better set I, there's there's a much wider breadth of things on this one here and this is Christoph Kozlowski's Decalogue and other television works and it's the other television works that you really really want to get into there so uh, I will go into everything on the set in a future video but Kozlowski's one they uh it definitely went out i that was the one for me now as for everybody knows i'm a huge phantasm fan that's pretty much been like uh, one of my ongoing things that i talk about here on this channel um everybody asked me which of the sets i was going to get well i can actually answer that right now since this baby is in my hand and i like this it's a, some people complain what's well, plastic now they're not gonna put a steel ball with like pointy things that's just not <laughs> logistically not possible so I do like this set and uh, this Phantasm set and I liked it better than the Well Go USA set. There are different features and there's certain things with the Well Go USA set that I did like. The thing that turned me off from it, me personally, was that we get the tall man just sitting in a chair with some spears going around him and I thought that was lazy. Uh, it was a very nice drawing but it was a lazy drawing, was not a good representation of the Phantasm series. You know, that doesn't, you know, go for the box set itself but I just thought I like this one better. Uh, I'm a huge Phantasm fan. I'm a fan has been banned from long long ago so uh, this one actually looks like uh, part of like you know the mortuary I haven't taken off the, uh, the side part yet now you open it up and I will show you this much I'll get into this one much deeper down the road so basically you got like the huge book and there's no even doubting like between book and booklet on this one and the uh, and five films come like this so I do like the way that these are done uh, some people would prefer like the big you have the big cases and I definitely understand that and I'm sure there'll be a non limited edition they'll have these here in regular plastic cases same as with the Hellraiser set but for me I just love the way this was done I love the, the look of the uh, of the phantasm box I just it's like having a little piece of the movie uh, a couple little pieces of the movie because you know part of the, the place and the ball itself again both of those are fantastic now I was asked before and I did mention in the last video that I would say what I thought of the Defender series uh, so really quickly I really enjoyed the Defender series it got a bunch of hate and again as always got hate for Iron Fist uh, and Finn Jones portrayal of the character now I am an old school uh, comic I was around when those comics were really popular um, Finn Jones is actually doing a very good job of playing the character of Iron Fist and it's and the character is growing and I, I can see what they're doing with it and why he was the way that he was um, he's a young character he's, he's a naive character he's a brash cocky you're not supposed to totally like him character and I I, I enjoy that so 
I really enjoyed the Defenders. I like the way that it was done. Uh, was it perfect? No, they, but they've got a lot to grow with. They've got a lot to work with as they go through. There are some great things in the series. Overall, I think that some of the side characters, they had to go to the side this time around, but there's certain characters I would like to have seen more of. I would like to have seen certain characters from actually from the Iron Fist series show up, but they didn't. And uh, I'm guessing they're saving it for the uh, for the next one because the Meachams were really cool characters, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so definitely check it out. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun series, but the best series right now going for me on, uh, on Netflix is... And I'm back. So The Ozarks is a really great show. So if you like shows like Breaking Bad and some, The Sopranos, series like that, especially Breaking Bad, then you're really going to like The Ozarks. It is a great little series. And again, The Defenders, it's a thumbs up for me. I really did enjoy it. I thought it was a really fun show. I uh, got the characters together. Luke Cage and Iron Fist have these moments where you know they're a team and it's coming up. They set, they're setting up Misty Knight and, uh, and Colleen Wing, you know, Daughters of the Dragon. Uh, so uh, really looking forward to seeing where they go with that. I'm hoping that they'll go that, w that way with it. And there's a scene where Parman and Iron Fist, they, they fight together for the first time and they go back to back. And it's a really cool sequence if you're a fan of the comics and that's going to be something that you're, that you're going to remember. And uh, I loved it. So there you go. I got a ton of stuff. Arrow, Kino, Indicator, just a bunch of stuff that I really, really wanted to, uh, to pick up. I'm looking forward to getting through like the rest of the Kino stuff, uh, the Arrow stuff. I've been watching, like uh, usually I get a couple movies a night in there, and uh, it's been a blast. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, right now my throat is completely gone. It is, uh, it's getting later. I'm tired. It is time for tea, and uh, everybody have a great night out there, and... Uh, if you got stuff from the sale, enjoy it and let me know what you got in the comment section down below or feel free to like link me to one of your videos. I'd love to check them out. Have a great evening, guys.